Okay, so let's review air pressure. So I'm going to start with two locations. And we have two people. And one person has several bits of air above them. The other person has also several parrots above them. However, if we were to measure the amount of atmosphere above each person, which location would be experiencing more pressure, A or B? Okay, now let's talk about winds. So winds work the same way no matter where you are at and what scale we're talking about. We have an area that's experiencing high pressure because it has this big pile of air above it. We have this other area that has a smaller pile of air over it. So this is where we would say that this is a high pressure and this is a low pressure. So the very basic thing is, is that winds will always move from high to low. So basically, we can think of these as two piles. What's, what wants to happen now is gravity is pulling both of these down. But because this one's a bigger pile, this one's going to cause this one to pull down more and move over to fill this side in until they're equal. So again, the idea is all these air particles are going to move in this direction in order to get to the point where the two air piles even out. Okay, so this is called an air mass. <clears throat> this is basically a bubble of air. An air mass has its own unique properties of both temperature and humidity. But inside the air mass, you can have different pressures at different locations. So, question, which one of these locations, A, B, or C, has the highest pressure and why? Okay, so out of the three locations, B has the highest pressure. The reason why? There's more atmosphere above B. So the sides of an air mass, because of its bubble shape, the sides of an air mass typically have lower pressures. The center of an air mass typically has a higher pressure. So going through here and labeling, we're going to give our center a high and the sides of our air mass lows. Now, as we said before, winds go from high to low. So in this particular case, the air is going to be moving from the high to the low. Again, from the high to the low. Now, that means that the air is going to be spreading out to the sides. Now, think about this again. If this were a big pile of water, what would want, what would want to happen to this big pile of water? It would want to even out. So all the water that's up here in the middle is going to try to get out to the outsides to try to make it even going all the way across. So one of the things that we find that happens in an air mass is what we call convection currents. Now convection currents play a role with hot air rising and cool air sinking. You guys know that already. Um, Mr. Belichio did a movie, uh, a video on sea breezes and land breezes where the land will heat up more during the daytime and the water will stay cool during the daytime. So you have hot air rising over the land and cool air sinking over the water. At nighttime, that reverses. Well, something similar is going on here. The air pressure is going from the high to the low. All this air that's up here at the top wants to sink down and spread out. So what's going to happen is above this high, we're going to have sinking air. So we have that. But that air is going to be going down and spreading out, which means that as it goes to the sides of this, it's going to push the lows up. Now this continues to create our convection cells, and we get something like this. Now what that also means is that the air is rising here and here, and the air is sinking here and here. What is the lesson that we learned about hot air and cold air in terms of sinking and rising? Which one of these is hot? Which one of these is cold? Okay, so cold air sinks, warm air rises. So places that we have low, set, low pressures, typically we also have warm air. Places where we have high pressures, we have colder air. So if you think about things a little bit, um, 
we're going to connect that to our experience in the future.